What's up guys, Alex Corey here with cultivatedchange.com. We are back with our next tutorial on how to grow microgreens for yourself or for a small business production. Today we're gonna go over brassicas. I have uh, two that I use routinely and then one that I am gonna experiment with and you guys will come along with me for that one. We're gonna go over broccoli, cabbage, and mustard today. Stay tuned. All right, so <clears throat> for my mixes, I use red acre cabbage, which is a very vibrant purple stem, it's gorgeous, has the same mild cabbage flavor as people expect from broccoli. Broccoli, I usually use Waltham 29. Those are both from True Leaf. Those are these ones. Um, I'm experimenting, this video will do a decisio. Uh, it's just supposed to be a darker shade of broccoli, and I wanna see if I can get any higher density on it. Waltham 29, usually I can only go up to 18, maybe 20 grams a tray. Uh, the red acre cabbage, this guy, I can get up to 25 grams a tray. Uh, I don't know why it's so much higher than the broccoli, but the broccoli tends to damp off and has uh, rotting issues from overwatering and just uh, too, too high a seed density. And then for the Ruby Streaks mustard, I used to grow it more, but I wanna do some experiments with it because I haven't had it in my rotation for a while. It goes in my spicy mix. That is probably around seven grams a tray. Whenever you start a new micro, always go with the seed manufacturer or reseller's recommendation for density. And Johnny's gives like a blanket generic, I think it's seven and a half to 10 grams per tray on any of their, their brassicas that aren't, uh, aren't broccoli basically. So we're gonna try a seven gram on that one. Worst case scenario is just the first true leaves come out sooner and it gets that bite really starts to stand out. So we're gonna do all three of those and we'll go into seeding and then broccoli and cabbage are about 10 day cycles. Um, they can go 13, but uh, I think the mustard will take a little longer. So we'll get started. All right, we are outside the seeding. It is amazing the difference that two days can make. It is probably 50-ish degrees. You can see the snow behind me. I'm in West North Carolina, we don't get a ton of snow. We got a bit of snow two days ago and I was out here receding radish and the wind were probably 50 miles an hour. I was in a winter jacket and trying to seed as low to the tray as possible because the wind was ripping the radish seed away from me. So this is a dream. Anyway, <clears throat> just wanted to state the importance of labeling your trays if you're doing experiments. I have had multiple instances where you're fine when you're seeding because, you know, I put the seeds in their respective trays but when you go to stack because i stack in this process once it's stacked it's gone like you have no idea where it is and that usually doesn't matter unless a variety is doesn't do well under weight germinating we'll go into that whenever we stack but for now um, i'm just going to go over the extremely basic process of filling soil And I just use, this is coconut core mixed with perlite with a little fertilizer and microbes. It's Bush Doctors Coco Loco. Um, I do about an inch per tray. If you want the full explanation and everything, I'll put my master class here. That's got it in detail um, behind the scenes of why I use that soil, cost and benefits, cost and uh, cost benefit ratio of everything. Um, so we're just gonna fast forward through the soil part and then we'll get back to when we actually seed. Okay, I am just going to thin this out quickly. Get any chunks out. Make it fairly even. Doesn't matter too much since we're stacking and everything will be pressed firmly, but you, you still want to be level. Some of these seeds, uh, namely the, uh, probably the mustard, does not have a ton of germination pressure. I remember that from when it used to be in my rotation about a year ago. And uh, it just doesn't, it won't germinate the same height at all if you have massive craters in your soil. So, you know, spend a little extra time, maybe a couple seconds just doing that. 
We'll firm everything down with our tamper. And then brassicas do not care so much about the temperature of water that you do. You don't want to do freezing. Uh, I'm doing this because, like I said, it was 20 degrees here. Uh, even last night it was probably 32. So the water that I left my hose out because I dumb <laughs> is pretty present. So we're just doing the watering can, which is fine. Everything prefers about 65 to 70 degree root zone temperatures anyway. So this is more conducive for germination. Okay, inch of soil, wetted down, pressed, and then brassicas do care and will have damping off issues. So try to spread fairly evenly. water that in once more and then I'm not going to stack these right now because I have about three more of each tray to do for my production uh, and I'll just give you a quick shot about the approximate density and what it looks like right now and then we'll skip to stacking inside. We are inside, uh, so I just finished. I did four more trays of each cabbage and broccoli just because that's my, my need at the moment. And I just wanted to go over some intricacies of this process, which is fairly important. I apologize for the dripping sound. That's moisture dripping onto the bottom trays. Um, stack of red acre here. I know that red acre just has a higher germination force, so the seeds just push up harder. Uh, you can cover that with something uh, if you want another tray you don't need to but um, just because I have slightly uneven soil I do like to do a brick like this so it's just a seven eh, ten pound paver on it like that call it set it for four days uh, this is the broccoli so I got one two three four five so i did four more five broccoli and then it's the mustard on top this is it broccoli does not have that germination force and it grows slightly slower than the cabbage so you do not need any super heavy weight this mustard alone plus all of them this bottom one will be having a hard time it'll germinate it'll be probably a half inch half inch lighter but it'll always be a half inch lighter. So even if you stack two or three, so if I cut this stack in half and had two and three, it would still be a half inch. So there's no point in doing multiple stacks when it just takes up less space. I am gonna put a tray on this. I won't do a paver because it's too much and I know that the mustard does not, I remember, from about a year ago that the mustard doesn't have that much force. So I will just press an empty tray into it. That'll maintain contact with the seed. So because it's moist, it'll suction it. Uh, so it'll force germination. And then once it pushes the tray up, I will just take that off, flip it over, put in a blackout dome. Um, but we'll check on how much it affects this bottom one. And we'll check back Today is Thursday. I will check back with you probably Sunday or Monday and we'll see uh, and we'll be flipping them until then. It is Monday, so it's f pretty close to exactly four days after we seeded. And uh, if you can tell, all the little first sprouts are up. I'm actually going to, <clears throat> you can do one of two things at this point. You can let it go. Some people don't want to touch anything until the first micros are pushing out of the sides, and that's fine. I'm going to let this stack go. This is our, um, I actually mislabeled these. This is the red acre. It says broccoli, but um, the seeds are almost impossible to tell, so I probably swapped them when I was outside. 
Uh, so the broccoli is over here. Red acre cabbage is over here. I'm going to let these guys come up a little bit. There, the mustard is on top and that's almost perfect for the mustard just because it doesn't have a ton of germination pressure. So I'm going to leave this stack one more day just like this. I am actually going to take the weight off the broccoli because it doesn't appreciate all that much weight. Everything is germinated, as you can see, with a pretty great germination. That's what that looks like. So I'm actually going to leave that and just put an empty tray on the top. So they will still need to push something up uh, and remain in fairly complete blackness, dark out but I'll uncover these fully and unstack them tomorrow, but I need them to get a little taller before I put them under light just because the, uh, they don't stretch as much as they would if you put them under light immediately. So I'll let these guys go for another day and we'll be back and we'll uh, put them all under lights. Good morning, everyone. We're back a day later. So this is five days after seeding. It is Tuesday morning. And I need to get cracking, so I just wanted to go over this with you guys. Mustard looks great. <clears throat> the consideration with mustard is that it doesn't have a ton of germination pressure. And whenever you're figuring out how densely you can seed something, <clears throat> it's always touchy leaving that much moisture on there. So we left it basically uncovered for five days. And I think we got lucky because there's not a lot of damping off going on, but always touchy um, humidity wise whenever you don't know how something handles not a lot of airflow. But this is gonna go outside under lights. By outside, I mean in the, the grow room. Um, <clears throat> mustard, I do not leave blacked out any longer than I have to. And then everything else I actually don't have any room out in the, the grow room right now because I'm switching up my rotation, um, changing some things from seven day to 10 day cycles because the seasons are changing. And my house isn't all that well insulated, so the humidity fluctuates. So um, growing times for things are shifting a little bit. I'm gonna put these guys in a blackout, meaning I'm just gonna flip the bottom trays on them. I'll uh, show you guys that quickly. That's always a risky move mainly just because that will be six days under with little airflow and uh, these two crops are usually pretty good about it you can see a couple spots here where there's just too much uh, it's too densely seeded so you always run the risk of damping off when that happens but I don't see anything catastrophic and I don't have the space yet <clears throat> so uh, what I might do, actually, let's do that. <clears throat> I'm going to do an experiment with you guys that I just ran through my head quickly. Broccoli has the real damping off problem. Red acre cabbage, for some reason, is much more resilient to water. I don't know why, even though we seeded it more densely. There's an extra seven grams there. Um, it just doesn't damp off as quickly. It just soaks up more water. Broccoli has a damping off issue. What I think I'm gonna do is I have these lights here. This is an overflow shelf for this reason. So I'm going to uh, put the broccoli up there, flip the light on, and we're gonna put the red acre cabbage in blackout and uh, leave it for another day just to lengthen it a little bit and until I have room out in the main grow room. So we'll, uh, we'll do that quickly. And then afterwards I will We'll do a, a quick check-in tomorrow whenever we flip the blackout on the red acre and I'll go over watering briefly with you guys. The one other quick thing to mention is uh, whenever, whenever you first expose these guys to light, it is your choice whether or not to water immediately. So I use cocoa 
and they're still pretty heavy. They retain that moisture because they're not using a ton of it and they've been in, um, it's been compressed so the moisture hasn't really escaped anywhere. I really like exposing things to some airflow, letting them dry out a bit before I like to water them just to alleviate any potential damping off issues. If you're doing this in peat, you might not have that luxury. You might not even have the luxury of uh, giving another day in blackout dome because it'll be dry. And that's the worst thing that could happen is the, the uh, seedlings dry out. So completely depend upon your context and what type of soil you're using. But I'm gonna leave these guys here in blackout and uh, I'll check back with you tomorrow. All right, it is the next day. We're at Wednesday, uh, my harvest day for the previous week and we are moving these guys into the main grow room. The broccoli is gonna stay here just because that light's fine. I'm actually doing an experiment and only running one light in the center, seeing if they stretch up to it just to increase the length so that I can uncover them sooner uh, and get the same length out of it. So we'll see how that goes. But we're gonna flip the uh, top trays on the bottom, bring them out into the grow room, and I'll show you how much I water depending on soil type. All right, we are in the grow room. I apologize for the background noise. There's a vacuum going outside. Uh, hopefully that's not too overwhelming. But um, as I said that I was gonna leave the broccoli in that other room for the experiment. I realized I'm not gonna be here over the weekend and someone else is gonna be watering. So just to reduce complexity of where things are, I'm going to, I moved them back in here with everything else. <clears throat> so the red acre cabbage actually is still moist. So I'm not gonna water it right now. And that's, you need to try to tell that. Um, you'll get the hang of it just by how heavy the tray is. So I'm gonna let airflow work its magic and let these guys dry out for uh, just today and then tomorrow morning I'll, I'll water them and they can take a little more water. So I will do, I water with this with just a growler because I have wood floors and a hose doesn't work too well. So it's six to four ounce and I will um, do a quarter of this per. So that's 20, um, or sorry, it's like 15 ounces. So about a pint per tray of water. Broccoli is a little, has a little more damping off issues. So it gets about the same, but a touch less. There are troughs in the bottom of the uh, 1020 trays, or rather, these guys. I fill those troughs for the broccoli. So it's probably around 12 ounces. Just, uh, they need to be done now, so. Let me see how, yeah, yeah, it's, so it's about a quarter. Um, it took it down to here from, from right there. So um, just a little less than a pint per tray, but that's with my context and that's with uh, cocoa. I don't water them every day. So every other day I'll water them. If you're doing peat, you might do that amount every day just because it doesn't hold water as well. These are also LEDs over here. Um, I found that brassicas just don't need the intensity of fluorescence. These are fluorescence and the red acre cabbage for some reason does appreciate the intensity of fluorescence. So you figure it out as you go, but they both grow about the same rate. Um, the red acre cabbage is a denser brassica. So I just get each leaf weighs a little or each stem each plant weighs a touch more and it's probably in the, you know, a gram more than the broccoli. Uh, and the mustard is right here. I had brought it out yesterday because it does not like to sit without airflow. So it's doing just fine. I'll put that here and we'll check back on these. Uh, like I said, I'll be gone for a couple days. I'll be back on Sunday, which will be our 10 day mark. Um, so that's a good place to check. They will be noticeably different if watering goes okay. They'll be about here by 10 days. That's a good point where some people like to harvest. 
Um, I let them go an extra couple days just for weight and to get that uh, color to come out and pop, but we'll check back soon. All right, it is our 10 day mark. Actually more like 11, but um, I was gone for the weekend, like I mentioned, and had someone else watering and everything looks like it's doing just fine. Red acre cabbage uh, has a little bit of damping off in some spots, but nothing to be concerned about. Uh, so this is a perfectly good harvestable spot. 10 days is where everything starts to look great. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, that's a full tray of broccoli. I'll get at least eight ounces out of that. So all the broccoli did extremely well. That's a good density. So anywhere from 17 to 21 grams on broccoli it tends to be the sweet spot. Uh, the red acre cabbage is doing good. If you can see that in the light. Perfect. And these are all, you can harvest these any point. And that was 24 grams. And then our mustard is popping. Uh, I'll do a close up of this because you probably can't see it. it in the light, but it has a very, very particular uh, hue or glisten to it. It makes it stand out in a mix, which is why um, I grow it. Obviously, that's not profitable to do just by itself unless you jack up the per ounce price. But if you throw it in a, a spicy mix, you don't need a lot of it to cover, to make the, throw this in with the red acre cabbage and it makes anything pop flavor wise and aesthetically. It just has a glisten to it, it's gorgeous. You could probably go a little more densely on this since things are actually falling over a little bit, but it's a good trial density. So that was seven-ish grams, um, anywhere from 10 probably to 15 would be pushing it, but you can jack up the grams per tray a little bit. And uh, so this is good harvest. I'll probably get, this might be two ounces, but that's not the point of growing that one. The red acre will probably be around 12 and the broccoli will be somewhere between eight and 10. We'll do some final weights whenever I go to harvest um, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, and uh, we'll do some um, full stem weights. A lot of these I make mixes and I'll chop them right at the tray length so the weight isn't what I'm going for so much as the aesthetic uh, and stem length for restaurants. But if you're just doing bulk, chop it as low as you can. Like for the broccoli, most of that is bulk. We'll go over that uh, in a couple days whenever we finalize everything. All right, welcome back guys. Uh, so a couple things happened since last time we spoke. This is actually a different batch than we had been doing. So that would have been a week ago um, that I was gonna do this and basically a number of orders changed and I had to just cut different heights to fill restaurant orders. So I didn't get to do the full weights of everything. So it wouldn't have been a uh, good weight representation. So we're just gonna do the harvest and the dates on these are all three, four. So this would have been, um, 12 days ago, so beginning of March, we would have, I seeded these same densities. Uh, that's not entirely accurate. Same density on the broccoli and the red acre cabbage. So 20, is it 24 grams? For the broccoli, it was uh, 17, 18. And then I bumped up the mustard because I could. Uh, I didn't see a ton of damping off issues on our seven gram. So I bumped it up to 10 to see how full we could get it. And I could go a little heavier on this. So I might try with a, uh, maybe a 12 gram next time. We'll see what happens, but this is 10, but this is just fine. The leaf structure, as I'll show you, uh, looks perfect. we got that first true leaf popping out and we're just gonna do some harvesting, see what we have for our weights. I'm gonna tear this guy. <clears throat> and that is, Good. All right, let's get started. All right, for our red acre, we are at 
250 grams. And that is just under nine ounces. Maybe something to write with. Okay, so like I said, I'm recording this. Nine ounces, uh, that could easily have been 10 if it had been a little more moist. Uh, so it'll differ an ounce based off of how wet it is and when the last time you watered it is, but that's about right. I usually plan for about 10 ounces a tray. So that's the red acre. We'll move on to broccoli. Okay, for broccoli. That is six ounces. Finally, we got our ruby streak mustard. I can smell the spiciness on this and it's fantastic. Uh, this is going to go into my spring sampler this week, which includes um, sunflower, pea shoots, radish, red acre cabbage, broccoli, and then I have a rotating um, sort of micro of the week, and it's either ruby streak mustard or a arugula, which is behind me, or a um, red pak choy, something with a little color and a little different to it. Usually not a ton of weight, which is why it's a specialty and it just goes on top. And that's still on. And this one's gonna be real low weight, but that's why it's a specialty. And uh, if you're selling these, you definitely get to charge more for them. Okay. And that is, that's actually eight ounces. That's a little strange. I've never had that happen before. So that was uh, 10 grams of Ruby Streak mustard. And that's about the same as the Red Acre. The Ruby Streak you can actually let go a little longer. So that's uh, 12 days. If you let it go a full two weeks or even three weeks, that first true leaf or that, uh, that more mature leaf looks really good it's uh it's frilly i'll put a picture of the mature up here on the screen it just makes a dish pop so i really like letting that one go but it was on the same timeline so again in closing we had uh 24 grams on the red acre cabbage that's for nine ounces the broccoli we had six ounces and the broccoli is always my lowest but everyone wants it so i have to have it and Ruby Streak Mustard was eight ounces for 10 grams. So Ruby Streak definitely has the most stem weight, uh, but it's also the most prone to damping off. So I don't, and the seed is very expensive. So I don't tend to, to do that every time. Great for premier mixes or anything to make a dish pop. And uh, you can harvest any of those at the 10 day mark. Uh, they'll be smaller obviously, but uh, if you're on that cycle, just as good. Um, in future videos, I'm going to end up doing probably an arugula, and uh, if anyone would like a pak choy or something more specialty, be happy to make experimentation videos, and I might do some experiments with lights with these guys, but uh, that's it for this one. Thanks, guys. I hope you found the video of some value. Uh, my goal is just to decentralize the food system as much as possible by spreading information that I found useful to growing all sorts of food over my last decade of growing. If you'd like to support the channel, there is a donate link down in the description. Uh, I also have an affiliate through True Leaf Market for microgreen and bulk garden seeds below. My social media you can find on the Linktree account. I'll take you to everything I pay attention to. Let me know what you'd like for future videos. Until then, build your community, build your resilience. Thanks for stopping by.